Man, I got nothing to say today, so we're going to be talking about the Zelda movie that's been announced like over a couple of months ago now, I think at this point. Hopefully you knew about that. If not, what's up? I just taught you something new. There's a Zelda movie coming out, apparently. It's also going to be done by, I think, the same people that did DreamWorks, but it's going to be live action or something like that. So anyways, nothing else is known about it. There's no trailers. There's no, I don't think there's any director set up yet. I might be wrong about that one, but I know for sure there's no actors announced yet. So here we go. We can speculate on who might be in the movie. Actually, for this video, I'm just going to give my, like my dream picks essentially, because I, I don't think that they're going to get picked, but it would be nice to see. So as far as Link, who would we choose for, for the main character? I think that Timothy Chalamet would be a great choice. That's the actor who was just recently in Dune and as well as uh, Willy Wonka. So now he's the rotating actor in Hollywood at the moment alongside Chris Pratt and Tom Holland. And I really don't want Tom Holland to be Link in this. He's got a like a young boy kind of energy, Tom Holland, whereas Timothy Chalamet kind of has like the, I don't know, like a little bit more of a, a model sort of look, but he can definitely be a little bit quirky, you know? I think it's a better fit is basically what I'm saying. I'm also just tired of seeing Tom Holland in everything. He's perfect as Spider-Man. I will never take that away from him. But when you start putting him in stuff like Uncharted to play as young Nathan Drake, I, now we're getting a little bit overboard with his star power, basically. So that's that's like my choice for like main Hollywood stuff now the big problem I already have here is something I've already kind of touched upon just a second ago there's not enough like rotating actors in Hollywood anymore in the 90s there was like a ton of actors that you would see in a ton of films but now we're just kind of consolidating things and we're just seeing like Tom Holland Chris Pratt The Rock uh, it's like it's the same like eight people everywhere and so as far as what I think is picking the best best link I would go with a no-name actor, someone who has worked in acting before, but just looks the part better than anybody else. I think that Luke Eisner, an actor who would played in Tall Girl, he would be a great fit. Let's go with him. Again, just give somebody a chance to, to also rise in the Hollywood ranks. I think Zelda will sell itself. I think whoever you put in the Zelda movie is not gonna matter. I think it's ultimately gonna come down to the fact that, oh my God, there's a Zelda movie, much like how the Mario movie was. You didn't see Chris Pratt's face, so he didn't really have the star power that, you know, he usually has. It was just the Mario movie sold itself. Same thing, Zelda movie, same deal. Give some no-name actors a shot. So for me, it would be Luke Eisner. I think that uh, I've seen a couple of preview scenes where, of him acting, and I think he does a good job. And then we move on to Ganondorf. Now, there is a rotating Hollywood actor that I think would be great. I personally would pick Michael Fassbender. Michael Fassbender has the accent. He has the imposing presence. And he just kind of, yeah, he fits physically very well into Ganondorf. Ganondorf is supposed to be an older character. I guess it's sort of modulable as far as how young or old he can be. But typically, he kind of seems like he's in older age than Link and Zelda, so Michael Fassbender could do an easy fit into that. You know, put some makeup on him, get him in some good costume, and I think that that would be like a fantastic choice. Like, I don't even have to think about any other actors for that role. Now, as far as Zelda goes, this one was just, I, I can't think of anybody because I tried like Google searching like young British actresses and nothing even really came up. All I'm thinking about is like, just we need like a young, ish actress with blue eyes and has an elegance to her and preferably has the British accent. So as far as that goes, I didn't find anything and I can't recall anyone that kind of fits into that very easily. Now the, again, there's like the, the rotating Hollywood actresses that I can think of, but like none of them really fit that bill, which is kind of weird. You know, like usually like you have an actress that kind of fits into every single archetype, but here, I think in this modern day, like, I don't really see it anymore. It's funny because I'm sure a lot of people will say something like Sophie Turner from Game of Thrones or something like that. Sophie Turner is getting a little bit older and also she kind of has sort of like a, she just doesn't really have a face that like represents something like Zelda's archetype. Like I get that she was also sort of like royalty in Game of Thrones, but she was almost like cast to be sort of like a sniveling character, like a little bit of an arrogant character. And that's 
to me, not what Zelda is. Uh, if I was like to go back in time and pick an actress that I think would be really good, Lucy Griffith would be really good. Or, I'm sorry, Lucy Griffiths. That was an actress that kind of fit into all those descriptors, but now she's getting old too. She's like in her 30s and all that stuff, so I, I really can't pick this. I'd have to sleuth through hundreds of Netflix shows just to figure out what actress would probably fit best into that part. Now, with all that being said, of course, the easiest pick, Tingle, Danny DeVito. <laughs> I mean, honestly, like, I don't need, like, a, a movie-accurate tingle. I think, if nothing else, what we need is someone that's going to make us laugh when they're on camera, and they need to be old, and they need to be out of shape. So, Danny DeVito, <laughs> Danny DeVito would be my number one pick. <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying anymore. So, anyways, with all that said, I want to also talk about how I would want to see the story adapted to film. I think that if they adapt any of the games into film, Ocarina of Time would be the best choice. I think that it's the easiest one to fit into two hours and 30 minutes. I think that the story is easily digestible and not too far out there. It utilizes the three main characters very, very well, if you consider Sheik the same as Zelda. And, yeah, I mean, it, you could it's just good. It's just a really good story. The other ones, they, they just, um, they're fine. And I'm also okay with the, them just doing their own story that's just sort of like heavily based on what we already know about Zelda and stuff like that. But again, if we're going to just pick one game to actually move to film, I think Ocarina of Time would be the best bet. Derek Bittner from Good Vibes Gaming gave this amazing idea when I posted about this on Twitter. He said to me, he was like, well, if they do that, Maybe they should make it into a two-parter film. So part one is all about Young Link, and then it just kind of does like, you know, a cliffhanger ending that leads into Adult Link for part two. And I was like, oh my God, that's brilliant. Let's do that. So clearly I'm super excited about the Zelda movie. I wanted to share this stuff with you guys. And, and yeah, if you have any other different types of opinions, let me know. This third channel, I read all of the comments because it's it's a more of a passion project. And honestly, I love sharing opinions with people. So if you have anything you want to say down below, let me know. I might even respond back to you. It might be a fun time. All right. Anyways, take care, guys.